Hey, uh, 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 hey, uh, hey, uh. Hello, hello, hello. Architecture. The grand. I have been forced into a position of the world where I have to, using logic and reason and patterns and observation and patterns and research and exploration and etc etc put the pieces of the puzzle of this world together in a way that is meaningful for me or at least a way in which i can sort of forge a path forward by looking back and trying to see what exactly we came from as we all do as people now many people simply trust the authority as well as i did as many as nearly everyone has. And until that authority, like a relationship, lets you down, until that authority repeatedly is caught in a lie, it should hold your trust. Now, uh, in today's era of <laughs> blatant dishonesty, provable, provable, in your face, blasted from the highest tower, pasted on every corner, that type of transparent manipulation, the kind that they admit to repeatedly, eventually will force you in a position where you no longer trust institutions. For example, when you see Merriam Webster, catering their uh, word of the day on Twitter to taking part in some political debate on clearly on one side, or using their word of the day to uh, sort of mock and deride one particular political party, you realize that these, this is no longer a neutral institution. When Merriam-Webster will change the definition of words to cater to the particular viewpoint right before your eyes, you can no longer trust these institutions. And once that circle of bullshit expands and you watch one by one these dominoes fall, you, if you're anything like me, and if you actually want the truth, you will look elsewhere. You won't find it there. And so due to the, some of the machinations of the powers that be, I've come to the opinion, to be clear, this is an opinion, that there was a civilization that has been banished from our history books less than a century ago. However, the evidence of it is everywhere. I believe that this civilization dominated technology differently, not necessarily more advanced than us, but differently, more favorable towards the harmonious uh, relationship with the earth. I believe it used different building materials. They were masters of masonry, concrete, brick, and they are visible all over. These gigantic iron glass structures, the domes, the metal needles, they're present on every continent. In my opinion, they had a part to play in distributing free atmospheric energy everywhere. Some of it's still in operation, some of the towers, some of the railway stations, but the most of it has been destroyed or imprisoned, and they introduced old, crappier technology like cables and wires. And the magnetic energy has been completely downplayed, the periodic table of elements has been depleted, and all historical documents have been heavily edited, original documents destroyed, passed down over the years, transcribed by monks who are prone to error and personal bias. All the things that you would say would make the Bible, or uh, any holy book, impossible to rely on. Well, we unfortunately received all of our historical documents the same exact way, so if you're going to apply that, then let's go ahead and do that across the board, if we're following, you know, some sort of pattern of logic. All this architecture that they call Moorish Revival, or Islamic, or Colonial, or Medieval, or Baroque, or Gothic, or Beaux Arts, or Eclectic, or Renaissance, or Palladian or Richardsonian Romanesque or Chicago School or Victorian or uh, Gothic. These are just labels. They believe that they are styles to hide the old and true function of what they were. The columns, the arches, the, the uh, rose windows, the ornaments, the iron, the statues, the towers, the domes. There are too many patterns that show themselves on too many cities, on too many continents. They all share similar, if not exactly the same, design patterns. And I believe these people were either purged or left around the time the Romans came on the scene, which was not thousands of years ago. Now, evidence of this appears on many maps, and this is a subject that is massive and sprawling. I only give you this preface to show that this is the prism through which I'm looking at one particular distinct feature of one style of building and showcase its presence throughout the world. And what I believe a test is a testament to not the style, because I don't believe people are stylistically the same. Homes don't look the same in Africa as they do in China or America. Therefore, most the fact that these exist everywhere, to me, in my mind, is a testament to the functionality of it, that it provides a function. Power plants look like power plants everywhere you go. Telephone lines look like telephone lines. Radio antennas look like radio antennas. That universal look that we find in technology, I'm applying that to what we see in old architecture. So I believe this is a functional thing. And this series is going to focus on one particular feature. 
I did once once recently, and it was about the little the knob-like protrusions that are often seen on many cathedrals that are very similar to Babylon power stations. Well, and this, again, one, very limited scope. And what the idea is, is not that this proves everything that I've said. Not that it proves anything. It's just evidence. It just makes you wonder why certain things are everywhere in the world. And since I've immersed myself in this stuff for several years, couldn't possibly convince anyone who hasn't seen it themselves. So this is a display of one particular little feature. And not being a master in the various glossaries in terms of all the various architectural features, I've just come to calling this the four-pronged castle tower. Now, this is one of about 80 different features that I have designated to be of interest. Many places I found dozens of examples. So I'm not going to show every single example everywhere. While I do possess those photographs and there are evidence out there, this is just to show you a cursory look at the widespread use of this architectural feature. And you can form your own conclusion as to whether or not it's bizarre. So this is what we're looking at, this four-pronged castle tower. Yes, you can build towers in a limited amount of shapes. Squares, rectangles, ovals, octagons, decagons, pentagons, whatever. So yes, certainly having anything that's going to be like a parallelogram or anything that's going to have four corners, it wouldn't seem that unnatural to have protrusions on each of those corners. But the similarities in the structure, the size, the diameter of these, in my mind, make it very suspicious. We'll start here. Alabama. This university in Alabama, which for some reason has a structure like this, looking like an old school castle. And many of the times you'll find that this peak, this tower, exists with a, with a peak inside of the four walls here. Peak that extends up here. But the four prongs are still visible, intact. Personally, I believe that they serve some function. Might be, maybe something else going on there. Now we jump to Angola. From Alabama to Angola, and you have the same four prongs here. Now you may say, oh, well, that's because they built churches that look like that. I, why do, I would argue that technically, you don't need this to worship God. You don't need this for any reason. So why would all churches need to feel they need to adhere to this standard? Not only that, but these buildings are remarkable to build. I doubt these roaming missionaries had the capability and the material and the manpower to build such things hundreds of years ago. This seems like quite an undertaking. Thirdly, I will add that you often see this red and white striped motif throughout them, which seems sort of odd, sort of toy-like. And it's worth to keep in mind that still to this day, the red and white stripe is used as a radio towers are often red and white striped to indicate that they're a power station of some sort. This isn't to convince you of anything. Just to show you stuff you may have never seen, you could form your own opinion. This one's in Australia. Quite a jump from the others. There are several here um, in Australia. <laughs> actually, there's actually dozens and dozens. But they vary in style. They're not built from the same blueprint, clearly. I mean, this one has a smaller tower next to it. It's a different color, different material as this one. But I'm just pointing out that it would appear that if this was everywhere in the world uh, for hundreds and hundreds of years, they tell us these were built, then that would imply that there is some sort of communication happening all across the world at the same time. It would imply that some of this construction predates the dates were given in America, especially. You have another one with different type of prongs, looking even more electric, and this is in Australia as well. And just to show you that, so that you can see that the various places we have many different styles of church, but yet the same four-prong castle tower remains. And this one is in Belgium. You can see this one here, but you've also got this one over here, and this would be the example of one with a larger steeple or pyramid in the middle of it. Not sure if they all had this at one point and a lot of them were just removed or if this is uh, something that came later that maybe enhances the effect of this. I don't know. This one is also in Belgium. I just included it because it is just such an impressive building. You can see this This has some sort of bar that runs all the way down, all the way down to the floor. And oftentimes what you'll find is that they have this sort of rebar all the way down into the basement. No one's really sure why. At least they won't admit to it. Here you have one in Benin. Very small little known country and this one almost seems as if it were an imitation of style versus function like they built it because they thought that they should and i'm not ruling that out as a possibility for many of these obviously people will emulate styles that they like this one is in bermuda quite a jump quite a jump to have this out here in bermuda the same features this one is in botswana built in these pictures from like 1905 you can still see four prongs here on what's kind of a relatively simple unornamented building this one is in brazil it is one of hundreds in Brazil, not always on a church, as you can tell. Some of them on embassies and castles and towers. And this one is in Brazil as well, a very different style. This one is in Sacramento, California, though this one is a post office, they tell us. Just a post office. This should give you an idea of what the transportation was like for the day. If you believe that all the uh, material here that was used to construct this was carted and lifted by wheels like this, and 
beasts of labor like this, well, you might want to re-examine that. This one is in Cameroon, one of the most poorest parts of the continent. This obviously is Canada. These are made of what uh, looks like a copper alloy. Also in Canada. Also in Canada. Also in Canada. This one is in the Canary Islands. That's right, at the coast of Africa. And it's difficult to tell, probably, unless you have this in very high resolution, but there are four taller prongs all around this vice with another interior piece here. Here you have Cape Verde, another one of the very, very poor places in Africa. This is from China, and you can tell stylistically, even by dress, that they are not European-influenced at all. You can tell by the nature of these buildings here. These flared tips, these are, you find these almost nowhere, maybe in Norway, but yet, same feature. This is in Colombia and Connecticut. <laughs> Cyprus, the island of Cyprus, dozens of examples there. This is Washington, D.C. This one is in Denmark, literally hundreds. Denmark, made of red brick. This is obviously the example with a very lofty steeple inside. The Dominican Republic also features this four-pronged castle tower. Ecuador, Ecuador, El Salvador. Hard, hard to see with that steeple built in between them, but they are there. England, of course, and there are thousands in England. I'm not kidding. There's a handful of them here. This is Equatorial Guinea in Africa. This lower one even has four here, with this bell tower constructed in the middle of it. Estonia. This is also Estonia. All these countries, these people that hate each other, we're told. They've warred for years. Stylistically, they all want to be the same? I think not. This is also in Estonia. Here you have one in Estonia that's very different. More akin to the one in Alabama. This is the island of Fiji. Finland. Hundreds in Finland. This also in Finland. And these are kind of interesting because it looks almost like these little caps were put over covers over all of it, except for the metal tips. France, of course. No shortage of these in France, actually. Uh, they are in abundance by the hundreds, if not thousands. This being another example, this size and the scale of a lot of these is just ridiculous. Here's a lighthouse in France even that has this feature, which there are many of those. Another French variation. Germany. Well, this is a bit of a poor example. There are no shortage of these in Germany. I should have picked a different picture for Germany, but you get the idea. This is in Ghana, Africa. You'll note the actual radio tower here. Modern radio tower, I should say, and also the red and white nature of the building, implying that perhaps it served a different purpose at one point in its evolution. Here is also one in Ghana, made of brick that's been painted. This is Hawaii, Honolulu, Honduras, Iowa, Iceland, Illinois, also Illinois, also Illinois, India, also India. Very standing out, red and white, my mind. This is another example in India, of which there are hundreds and hundreds. And this is another example in India. Indonesia, Ireland, another place with literally hundreds of examples. Here be another one. Italy, of which you can imagine how many there would be in Italy. Here's another much older one we're told in Italy, with the same feature. Another one in Italy. Japan. Japan making them too. Interesting. I thought they were so set apart. So different. See, this is Kansas. From Kansas to Japan to Fiji to Botswana to Latvia. And this one <laughs> being occupied by an amazing nest here. It's hilarious. <laughs> This is also Latvia, Sands Nest. Lebanon even, getting in on the game. Look at that, even Lebanon. This is another example, or at least in the daytime. Lithuania, note the color as well. This is also Lithuania, and as the caption shows, Massachusetts. This being a little bit of a better example than the other prior, and there's no difference in this and in any castle anywhere in the world. This is the island of Madagascar in Africa. This is another one in Madagascar, just buried in a neighborhood I happen to see. This one is in Malawi. This one is in Malta. These two, I should say. And there are hundreds in Malta. This being another example. Mauritania, one of the poorest places in Africa. Michigan. And also Michigan. I'm sorry. This is Mississippi. This is Michigan. This is Myanmar. In Southeast Asia, clearly. Norway, as you, can, as you can see. New York. Dozens upon dozens of them in New York. All across the state. This also being from New York. This is Ohio. Pennsylvania. This is Pakistan. And you see the four here on this wider tower, but also the four here in this inner tower. And probably four on the courtyard as well. Two being would have been behind us. Uh, this is also Pakistan. Even on these smaller ones on the side, you have the four. And on this larger one as well. Panama. Paraguay. Also Paraguay. Also Paraguay. This is their uh, capital building. Peru. See on these here, they've built domes in between theirs, which is un not uncommon. Not very common in South America, but honestly, all these styles are transplanted all across every continent. There is no difference. No difference anywhere you go. Here's Poland. You can see they've got here, here, and then back in the distance, this other building also. 
possessing those that we're told are just styles. Magnificent castle in Portugal. Also in Portugal. Also in Portugal. This having the same four prongs and all of its little towers. Also in Portugal. Also in Portugal. Also in Portugal. And Rhode Island. Oh. Rhode Island. Very strange building to be in Rhode Island in the first place. Especially as it looks identical to this one in Romania, which also happens to be a red and white stripe. How about that? It's almost as if there's a pattern developing somewhere, but you know what? I'll let you come to that conclusion. This is also in Romania. This is in Russia. You can imagine how many hundreds are in Russia. Often in Russia, like you'll see these dome, golden dome tops, you'll see if you critical eye, you can see in this square top towers, you will find those. Often kind of the hidden there. Saudi Arabia. I wouldn't expect them to have the same sort of uh, styles. Anyone else would you? Scotland, of which there are hundreds of examples. Also Scotland. Also Scotland. This Serbia getting in on the action. All these look as if, in my mind, they're all built the same era. Like, they look like the same material, pretty much. Of course, no, no. Some of them were born, built in 500 BC or 580, and some of them were built in, you know, 1984 or whatever. I mean, it's just... But, stay in line here. Singapore. Different view of it. Another building in Singapore. Slovakia. Also Slovakia. Also Slovakia. Here, this one, if you get in closer, you can see it's got the four here and also the four back here. This is in South Korea. You can believe it. Two different buildings. Spain. There are hundreds upon hundreds, if not thousands of examples in Spain. And here's a few. Here's well up here. This is Sri Lanka. Getting in on the action. St. Lucia, the island. Here's another one. This is on their government building. Sweden. Sweden here as well. And you look at this and you wonder, see, if this is not a more advanced model. If the ones in Alabama and some of the other ones we saw used to have these and maybe they were uh, removed. Sometimes you see things like this inside of the actual churches themselves, as if they were taken off the top of the building. So, just food for thought. Switzerland. Taiwan, even. Look at that. Even Taiwan. How about that? And Tunisia. Also Tunisia, which, tell me you expected that in a poverty-stricken area of Africa. <laughs> defies comprehension. Definitely defies historical narrative, but... Turkey, and this is the United Kingdom. This as well. This as well. It's actually, I believe, in England. Somehow these got sorted. This is the United Kingdom as well. United Kingdom as well. For all of these, you can see how many different variations of this there are. No matter the height, no matter the use, the material, and even the structure. It is pretty telling to me, my mind. This, of course, being the Ukraine. And really a, a crappy example, because there are hundreds. Uruguay, not to be left out here. And of course, the war-torn, what we are told is war-torn, poverty-stricken Venezuela. Vietnam, quite a surprise. Vietnam as well. And Virgin Island on St. Croix. St. Croix, Virgin Island. Pictures from before 1900. This one is in Wales. Scotland. These last few are just from Scotland. <laughs> Even pre-photograph, this was a thing. This is in Thailand again. And so, what do you think? I think there's a little more to this than we're told. We're told really nothing about it, other than that it's, it means nothing. I find that hard to believe. This is the island of Madeira, by the way, in Africa. This is in Mozambique. This is in Nigeria. California. Rochester, New York. From coast to coast. Montreal. And on and on and on. This one, this terrible picture is in South Africa. I you can't tell. There's an old one from 1900. This is South Korea. All these little fellows with their little hats. <laughs> Super cute. And New York. This is from the island of St. Vincent and the Grenadine. Also New York, this one. Also New York. This is Nebraska. This is Minneapolis. This is Iowa. Back to Australia. Prince Edward Island, even. And one of the more patently ridiculous ones. This is Syracuse. Post office. This is a college in Western University, Canada. There's an old picture from Venezuela. Here's an old picture from Vietnam. An old picture of Singapore. Toronto. So, they're literally in every continent, in every country, any place I look. Just something to put in the old portfolio as food for thought. And I'll be back with many more videos focusing on architectural features that are universal, that are basically fuel for my fire. When I look at modern history in the eye and I say, No! Nah. Nah.